Welcome back. I dyed my Benny's Clip micarta. Uh, I get the Iridium from Kershaw. And then we talk about great truck knives. Those are knives you leave in your car. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. My favorite comment from this past week was from LD667. He says, okay, you enabler. I've been looking for uh, looking at that synergy for months. The synergy he's talking about is the is the Civivi synergy right here. Uh, okay, you enabler. I've been looking at that synergy for months. Timing has not been good or to order one. And actually, I'd put it out of my mind until you put it on screen in front of my face. So now I have one on order. Uh, it'll be a stretch as my disposable income is limited, but as they used to say, the juice will be worth the squeeze. I enjoy your channel as well as Dave's, and I presume he's talking about this old sword. Uh, thank you very much, LD. I appreciate that. And um, yeah, you know, sometimes uh, sometimes you got to be careful. You don't want to be irresponsible with family funds or anything like that. But uh, sometimes there's just a knife that calls out to you and you... Uh, and you have to go for it. I just had one like that, and I waited weeks, and I actually saved for it. Now, it's not that much, but it's something I definitely don't need. I ordered it. It's on the way, and and it's not that expensive. So my whole point is um, I'm trying to be more mindful of uh, in my buying. However, I, I can't be too mindful because then the channel won't exist. <laughs> All right, LD667, thank you so much. Uh, glad I could enable your habit. All right. That said, I think it's time for a pocket check. In my front right pocket today is the venerable and always awesome CJRB Large Pyrite. I'm a huge fan of this knife. Uh, I was a fan of the Pyrite the moment I got it in hand. I remember kind of quipping that it was soulless and then uh, i kept flipping it and and discovered its soul it's got great amazing action uh gave that uh, original 3.25 inch drop point pyrite away to a friend uh and got the big one because i knew i'd want the the four inch version i love this knife slim light really amazing action you can see all the weight relief on those internal uh, steel liners there. Micarta, I mean, it is nice and svelte, but that big broad blade is the same width as, or same thickness as the original small pyrite. So with the added broadness, there's going to be added sliciness. I love the forest green micarta on this. Uh, oftentimes with green micarta, we'll see a more military olive uh, type green. This is has more blue in it. It's more of a Jaguar British racing green uh, sort of color. I love that knife. Uh, that uh, you can see as I put it down there that the liners are just slightly proud of the micarta. It's a nice look. It's sort of uh, shadow boxes everything. Uh, so anyway, great knife. A big capable knife to have in your pocket with with no impact. You barely know it's there. Okay, next up in my pocket, uh, I had it riding in my uh, knife ship free. Um, leather slip, which uh, I left upstairs, but uh, the Barlow, the big, big Lake Champlain Barlow from C. Reisner Cutlery, designed by Austin Jackson. Um, he is the interview this week. You got to listen to that. What a great interview. Great guy. Uh, continued a, a love of knives and a company created by his grandfather and, uh, and has uh, consolidated that into traditionalpocketknives.com and the knives he designs and the exclusives he has there. Uh, what a great guy and what a great knife this is. It's big. That's a three. Uh, it's like a three and a half. It's like a three and a quarter. I, I'm going to have to measure it next to the iridium. Yeah, it's a, about a three and a quarter inch, 3.3 inch blade. That's big for a slip joint. Full height, hollow grind on this knife. Uh, very thin behind the edge. Uh, great double milled. Uh, poles here on both sides. You can just pinch it right where those uh, nail necks are. You don't even have to put your nail in there. 
it's more like instead of a nail neck, it's like a finger fat neck. You just put your finger in there. And since uh, it's kind of like a jack wolf knife, since at the very top of the of the blade at the spine, it's where that um, full height hollow grind is terminating. So the edges are canted out that way, which makes a, a great uh, uh, surface on both sides to grip with the thumb and the forefinger to rip and grip as uh as jared neve says uh, i love this lake champlain barlow they also have it in a very tempting sheep's foot blade which when i first saw it i was like oh definitely the bowie all day long and i love this bowie or this clip point blade but i i gotta say i have been checking out the um the sheep's foot uh, and it is beautiful and i might have to go there okay next up on my belt right up front uh, one I've, I carry quite a bit. Um, I have a, a knife in the works with this gentleman, and I can't wait to, to see that thing come to fruition. Uh, but a lot of it is inspired by, uh, a lot of that design is inspired by this. It's not a ring knife, but uh, the spirit of this knife. This is the Night Stalker, and I would launch the micarta off the table, but I'm not going to. Great, great sheath. I mean, let me let me focus on the sheath for a quick second. That is uh, something T. Kell prides himself, Tim Kell prides himself on, and something he's known for in the industry is his amazing low-profile sheaths that are pretty much uh, maintain the width of most average belts. It's not very big. And then uh, you put this uh, um, collaboratively designed uh, T. Kell knives and... Uh, um, deep, uh, oh man, concealed carry, uh, DCC clips right here. And this thing rides beautifully horizontally and, uh, set up so that you draw it with the, with the ring. Um, but it's the night stalker. And, uh, this is the knife that basically reinvigorated my love for ring knives. I've, I've been uh, very shy about them. I like them, but uh, I've heard horror stories about people, degloving their fingers which is a horrible term you know we can picture the skin of someone's this the flesh of someone's finger coming off the bone just like a glove because they have a ringed knife on and they're uh, going at it in some sort of a dynamic situation just sounds awful degloving but anyway uh this one is lined up very nicely so that you could uh you can have a full fist grip there without it realigning your knuckles or anything and what a great, uh, what a great little um, utility blade that is. It's not that little. It's three and a half inches. This one happens to be AEBL. I know uh, they do a lot of ADCRV um, at TKL knives. If you don't have any, you gotta get one. Get get a TKL knife. Just peruse the the website. Oftentimes they they work in drops. They uh, the demand is bigger than the capacity to create at this point, which is a great problem to have because it means there's plenty of room to grow. Uh, but it can be frustrating when trying to acquire a knife. But this Night Stalker is worth the wait and worth the getting on lists. Uh, and he drops them relatively frequently because uh, he knows where his bread is buttered. And that knife is, uh, is a big part of it. I love that thing. Very, very sharp. And then don't forget about the nickel boron coating that keeps it nice and slick and sleek. So it will uh, it will glide through whatever you're cutting and uh, it will slip in and out of the sheath with a plum. So definitely check that out. Of course, I had an emotional support knife on me today. My ESK was the uh, Colin Maison Pierre CM design designed Kubi Royal uh, in D2 and uh, beautiful. Um, neutral micarta i i really like jade micarta or i mean um jade g10 i know a lot of people don't like it and i get it um a lot of people don't like ultim because they think it looks like urine uh i like it i think it looks beautiful <laughs> so you know to each his own uh in this case the this uh jade g10 reminds me yes of jade a beautiful and sacred material at least to the uh to the chinese um ancient Chinese or maybe not even so ancient, but uh, I studied a lot of Asian art history and uh, it's very, very interesting stuff. And Jade plays heavily uh, and it's I think it's a beautiful material. And so when you see something, when I see something that reminds me of it, uh, such as this G10, 
I tend to like it. So um, especially next to the black, which I find sets off the, the subtle color of JG10 very nicely. All that said, that's my own personal uh, preference and stuff. This, this is an awesome knife. Uh, this one, I think, is the first uh, CM-designed knife that became a production knife. And it's been a very good seller for Kubi. They have a titanium version of it which I must say I would love to have. Uh, it's got a great front flipper, even for a left-handed 52-year-old man. And uh, I mean, I'm not left-handed, but even in the left hand of a 52-year-old man, uh, it works great. Great opening hole, um, really nice blade shape. You've got some belly there, uh, enough to do what you need to do, but it keeps the tip real low, kind of like a Warren Cliff. Uh, well, a bellied Warncliffe, we like to say on this show. And you'll never use it like this, but if you had to, uh, it's great in Pical reverse grip and regular reverse grip due to the shape of that pommel. Uh, it gives you that asymmetrical shape to hook your thumb over, and it works in either, either orientation. Ooh, look at this. Unintentional green carry. All three, all four of these knives are green. That's pretty cool. I don't usually do that, and I, I wouldn't do that on purpose. I like to mix things up, but kind of cool, uh, incidentally. So here we have the CJRB Large Pyrite in green micarta. We have the Lake Champlain Barla by C. Reisner Cutlery in green micarta. We have the TKL Knives Night Stalker in that, uh, um, what is he calling that, green burl, uh, olive drab green burl. And then we have in JG10, the Kubi Royal. Such a sweet setup. I'm very excited um, uh, that I was carrying all green today. I wish I had known about this earlier. Why does, I'm always the last to know, you know, last born, last to know. Okay, uh, so next I want to show you something that you can do with your Jade G10 knives. I just happened to do it with one that was a black micarta. I dyed the handles on my Benny's clip, my Jack Wolf knives, excuse the sound, the Jack Wolf knives, Benny's clip. Um, it's a great knife and they use great micarta, but this was one of those cuts. You have some in your collection that no matter how much oil you rub into it, no matter what you do, you can't get a nice color out of it. It, it stays that sort of whitish color from the epoxy, uh, not the blackish color from the dyed canvas. So, um, I decided to do something about this very important deal. Uh, and it is uh, now maroon. Uh, I took some maroon writ dye and, uh, you know, put it in the boiling water, put some salt in there uh, per the directions and dyed the handles of my Benny's clip. And I think it turned out beautifully. If you don't think so, don't tell me otherwise, because uh, all you need are a pair of eyes. I'm going to put this on some gray here. So we can see the background. Now you can still see up towards the first screw on the scale that uh, that epoxy is is dumb. You know, it's coming through there. But the rest of the micarta here has really taken that color nicely. And it looks really cool next to that blasted titanium. Um, I love my car. I love maroon. You know, I love micarta. I love maroon handles. Um, turn that down one notch. And uh I just think it looks great on this knife. It really improved, well, improved it and and uh, and personalized it for me. So I'm very excited about this. I have, uh, I was running around. I had this boiling uh, cauldron of of uh, of uh, Merlot color writ dye boiling away. I'm like, what else can I dye? I ran downstairs, and everything would uh, require disassembly. Uh, so I didn't, I wanted to experiment. I've never done it before. I wasn't sure how it was, how it was going to work. So I didn't want to take apart all of my, uh, all the knives I might want to die. And I have like, for instance, my Kaiser Mad Tonto, um, that could use a die job. It's that, it's that black micarta, but mm, it's not so black. It's more like just grayish. So, um, I'm excited about that. Check it out. People have put up videos. I will do the next time I die something which uh, could be over this next, well, probably next the weekend after this coming weekend. Uh, I'm going to do a tutorial because I was squeamish about it, but it's very easy and it worked very well, at least with the micarta on the Jack Wolf knives. Okay, so the reason I'm not going to be doing any dyeing 
or video making uh, this weekend, at least in terms of dying scales, is that I will be in Conroe, Texas. Cannot wait. Uh, I will be there from Thursday to Monday, the fourth, uh, but the show is the fourth and the fifth Texas Custom Knife Show. There will be uh, live forging competitions live cutting competitions in the form of blade sports, tomahawk throwing, uh, tables with custom knives, and then uh, Jay Nielsen and Doug Markaida of Forged in Fire Fan will be there to test blades. Uh, I will be there to MC some events and to judge um, judge the knives on uh, in competition. And uh, I'm really, really excited. This is the first time anything like this has happened to me so it's a it's a great thrill and it's an honor and i'm really psyched and texas right uh, i'm really excited to be in that state i've sort of idealized it for a long time and i uh, haven't been there since i drove through it as a uh wannabe punker as a child so uh yep i'll be there i hope you're there too uh that's this weekend november 4th and 5th texas custom knife show if you are there and you recognize me by all means, come up and introduce yourself. I love meeting new people. Uh, all right, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we got some really uh, interesting and exciting new offerings out there in the knife world. And then we get to two interesting and exciting uh, new additions to my collection. That's coming up on the Knife Junkie podcast. Among this week's specials at Knives Ship Free, the Knives Ship Free exclusive Rogue River from LT Wright Knives is back in stock. This run features a Scandi Ground A2 tool steel blade. This thing was made for the woods, and as soon as you try it out, you'll want to find extra chores just to keep using it. ZT0006 is a beast of a blade built on CPM3V tool steel with a bead-blasted finish and protective clear Cerakote. The handle features textured G10 scales with a steel guard and end cap, and the mini bugout is an iconic compact EDC, and Knives Ship Free is having a special sale on the Alpine Glow and Seafoam colors. This is a great deal, so grab one while supplies last. Get these deals and other great specials from our friends at Knives Ship Free. Just use our affiliate link, thenifejunkie.com slash free. That's thenifejunkie.com slash free. Support the show and get a great new knife at the same time. Thenifejunkie.com slash free. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. Thanks to AI Jim for that uh, reading that liner. I think that's really cool. I like knowing uh, the specs. I like that uh, AI Jim is reading off the specs there. Uh, that ZT006 looks so badass. All right. Anyway, let's talk about four new really exciting knives coming up uh, this week. Um, <laughs> really exciting because each one of these uh, from a knife brand that I I I like or 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 watch from afar, but these are all ones that could bridge the gap and get me to uh, spend my hard-earned money. The first one is from Pena, uh, Enrique Pena, and the Pena, Pena X series. Uh, you'll have to forgive me. When I sent my notes to Jim, I did not put an Enya over the Enya over the N in Pena, uh, so that is my mistake. But uh, uh, the Pena X series, um, uh, production knives from Enrique Pena, a lot of cool ones out there, but this one just takes the cake for me. I just I love the long, slender profile here. This is called the Sicario, the Sicario, and that a uh, Sicario, if if I am not mis I am not mistaken, is a, a sort of an enforcer, a heavy, a hitman, maybe. Um, you know, we've all seen the movie with uh, Benicio del Toro, and we all get the idea of what a Sicario is. Someone you don't want to mess with. That's for damn sure. Uh, so this is a large uh, and lean, uh, and I might say long, front flipper. Uh, and, and Enrique Pena says it's the culmination of years of knife making and design, which I think is cool because he's been doing it a long time and is, uh, well, obviously a master. And he also happens to be the, the personal hero of a number of knife makers that I know. So it's cool to see him, um, you know, feeling that strongly about one of his designs. You can see it against uh, next to one of his others. Uh, this is a fighter style 3.5 plus. So I'm thinking it's about a 3.7 inch blade. I don't know. 3.5 plus is an interesting measurement, but that's M4 steel and uh, people love M4 steel. Uh, it gets, 
second billing maybe not maybe it's like a sigma steel you know you don't it, it's quietly it's it's a strong silent type you don't hear about it too much it's not used too much i know uh uh, Blade HQ uses it for their exclusives often, but I think that adds to the mystique of this beautiful knife. Uh, you got uh, six different versions, a uh, number of different inlays and different titanium treatments uh, for that uh, handle. Uh, so uh, fat carbon are the inlays, uh, ceramic bearings are the bearings, and they are available now, the Sicario with that cool, long fighter style blade. Next up, this knife is also pretty damn beautiful and since it's got a 3.5 inch or more uh blade i'm very excited about this this is uh the surge knife co trope uh trope an interesting name because uh, this is not uh, a you know i guess the trope here is frame frame lock flipper but uh, the design itself is quite unique i uh, love the shape of this thing now this is based on a custom knife a much sought after custom knife that he only did a few of. And they are, uh, as uh, Ben Schwartz of Knife News said, snugly tucked away, never to be seen again in uh, private collections. So this is a, uh, you know, it's a real service or I don't know. It's a, it's a real nice thing to do if you're a knife maker to, to come out with something that is just impossible to get but people love it. And I love the look of this knife. I love that uh, pinched handle. Looks like a fixed blade to me. And uh, and the sinuous blade is gorgeous. That blade is N690. It's a modified uh, hourglass uh, surge signature style handle. And uh, well, this sucker is available now on the Surge website. He's an interesting guy, Serge Panchenko. Uh, you know his a lot of his very, very unique uh, knives, both custom and production. He also uh, started a watch company. I think that's cool. Uh, you can see that crossover in the Finch Knife Company, guys. Um, Spencer from Finch has a, his own watch company called Raven. So uh, you can see that EDC market crossover thing. Uh, for me, it's exciting when it crosses over into watches. All right, next up is from Vosteed. Uh, this is the Thunderbird, and we've seen uh, versions of this in the past, but they're uh, really building this Thunderbird around the Trek lock. That's their button lock. And uh, I'm I'm reading, you know, reading the article about this, and they claim that it has three opening methods, but I count five. I count five opening methods. We'll get to that. Uh, in, well, let's get to it right here so my, I don't forget. Uh, this knife, uh, if you can look at it in the closed version, which I think... Uh, we have on the bottom of the screen um it has yes five ways of opening it and we'll start with the low profile inline regular uh, flipper and then you uh, just go north of the pivot and you have the front flipper and then you go due east from that flipper and you have the the opening hole that's three and then east of that and you have the fuller that's four and then five you can just simply squeeze that button lock and whip it out with centrifugal force. So uh, I, I like this view of it. Actually, it's a beautiful knife closed. It's a really cool knife, period. Uh, but um, loving this thing in, in that button lock. Five ways to open it. As I mentioned, it comes in this version, this sort of topographic G10 with, um, the G10 is with M390 blade steel. And then you can get the tie of frame lock version of this with LMAX, uh, kind of a, uh, cousin of M390. Uh, cool that it comes in both, and I like that they offer LMAX, which uh, you don't see too much of. The blade itself is a bit of a Tonto, and um, it's kind of, to me, halfway between an Americanized Tonto and a Japanese Tonto. I like the look of this Thunderbird. All right, lastly, um, another knife from Giant Mouse. Um, I got to say, they to me, they they run together in my mind. They all have such um, emblematic designs because they're coming from uh, Jens Anzo and um, and Vox uh, uh, Jesper Voxnes of Denmark, and uh, they have definitely uh, very resonant design styles. I mean, it, it's like a very thin line between them at this point. Uh, this beautiful knife, it to me looks a bit like a folding Nesmuk that blade. It's the Jagt or Jagt which means hunter, 
auf Deutsch. I got to get used to this. I'm going to be there soon. Uh, so this is a um, really ergonomic hunting knife uh, that they've created in EDC proportions and EDC carryability. You know, it's a, uh, a beautiful little 3.3-inch uh, magna cut. Um, I'm going to say it, Nesmuk blade. That looks like a Nesmuk blade to me with that uh, uh, um, ascending spine. Uh, with a spine belly, fat back, if you will. And then it drops down to a uh, higher than center line point. And then you have a whole bunch of belly and a bit of straight to end it off. Uh, to me, it's a it's a fetching design. I think it's actually uh, quite beautiful. I find that all of their, uh, all of the giant mouse designs, uh, if nothing else, are beautiful. Uh, I, they don't tend to be unique from one to the other. It to my eye, uh, but this is where that breaks that. We, we see a lot of clip points from them, and they do a beautiful job with them. Um, but I think here with this uh, Nesmuk style drop point, they've changed it up just a little bit. And uh, yeah, I think you don't have to be a hunter. You could be a Johnny Walker Black Label drinker exclusively and carry this knife and get uh, and get good use out of it. Now, if you're wondering. Uh, why the the scotch reference i'm looking at a picture on screen here and it's the knife sitting on a, a johnny walker black label so you know i think they're saying you don't have to be a hunter to use this jogged uh but if you are you'll be happy you were um 3.7 uh 3.3 inches of magna cut flipper opening hole ceramic bearings everything that we come to expect from that look at that that's a cool shot that's a nice looking knife uh, so you can get it in green and black canvas micarta or this orange G10. And if you actually are using it uh, for hunting, that's probably the one you want to get. Wire ambidextrous clip available now. Check out Giant Mouse. They're just crushing it. And, uh, man, they just keep coming out with new knives. And uh, you got to believe that they're they're awesome. We know they have great designs. And we're no, we know they're being manufactured uh, in, in a great, great place. All right. Uh, still to come on the Knife Junkie podcast, we're going to take a look at the state of the collection. I have two new ones that I'm very excited about, one new to me and one new to the world, right here. The Get Upside app is your way to get cash back on your gas purchases. Get Upside is an app you put on your smartphone, and whenever you need to get gas, search your area for savings, claim your discount, fill up your tank, and then take a picture of the receipt with your phone. And that's it. You've just got cash back. Visit theknifejunkie.com forward slash save on gas to get the app and start saving. Again, that's theknifejunkie.com slash save on gas. And now that we're caught up with Knife Life News, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. Kershaw. Haven't been so excited about Kershaw in a, in a while. And then this year, they popped out with a few that really caught my eye. This one, chief among them, I actually bought, and that is the Kershaw Iridium. And um, I know a lot of you have probably already gotten your hands on this knife. Um it came out to some fanfare. People were very excited about it because, um, well, it's that amazing uh, action on it. It's got a uh, an ambidextrous bar lock on it, and it is incredible. It's not your average Kershaw big box store um, speed safe knife. It is a beautifully tuned um, EDC knife on bearings with a really, really great um, version of the axis style lock. So, uh, finally got this. Um, I think it was maybe I, I, it was someone's video. Someone showed that this had come out in black and I just loved the way it looked so much. I, I, I popped it in my cart. Um, this, uh, I have been carrying a bit. Uh, this is a great light. This is contoured aluminum on the handle. So it's a great light, uh, you know, um, Around the house carry, I, I tend to find myself in gym shorts quite a, quite a lot around the house, being active, doing stuff. And then when I can, dipping into the man cave and maybe uh, doing a couple of kettlebell swings, whatever it is, I like, to, I like to be around the house in light garb. And this is great for that And because uh, you got a fully capable 3.4-inch blade that's uh, D2 there, made in China. Um, Coated nicely, awesome action if you need a little fidget, uh, but a great one-handed 
knife uh, option. I, I, I'm really digging it. Uh, I know it's old news at this point, but I do recommend it if you're if you've been on the fence about it, I'd go for it. Look at that blade. It's beautiful. Uh, symmetrical spear point blade. Uh, not symmetrical in the grind, but if you hold it up to the sky, it's pretty much uh, it's pretty much right there. You got some jimping on top. You got great thumb studs. Uh, that coating is already starting to wear off here, but I don't care. Uh, that's from some pretty stout cardboard. And uh, this will be one of those knives that... Uh, if it if it does wear out, that's cool. I don't mind the coating wearing off. Here, uh, that there's that little symbol down by the Ricasso. That means that's an in-house design. It also means that the designers at Kershaw are a bunch of nerds because they made their symbol look like a, look a bit like a Star Wars uh, rebel symbol. Am I right in that? I guess I'm not. Uh, to me, every time I look at that, I'm like, is this a Star Wars knife? And then I realize, oh no, that's their symbol. <laughs> so uh, God love you. God love the nerds. Uh, I mean, we wouldn't be here if we weren't, uh, nerds. All right. So, uh, this is the Doug Ritter auto RSK Mark one, uh, Doug Ritter was on Thursday night knives two weeks ago and announced and showed this off. Uh, it was really, really exciting that evening, that very same night, uh, before I went to bed, I ordered one, it showed up and I'm so stoked. Hogue obviously is awesome at making knives. Uh, you might not know that their automatics are spectacular, and this is a perfect example. Um, you get all of that RSK Mark I design. I'm going to do this left-handed. Um, with a coil spring um, out, the, out the side action. I've been carrying this one with the Iridium, uh, kind of like when I got the Synergy and the Mystic. I carried those two knives kind of uh, exclusively for a few weeks. That's what I've been doing with this knife and the Iridium. Um, really, really loving the utility of this. It's that the RSK blade is so great with that really high flat grind. The knife, uh, the knife is nice and broad so that that flat grind is essentially, <laughs> I don't know, it's kind of like a full height flat grind of a normal size blade. But anyway, you got that broadness. This is Magna Cut. Very excited about that. Uh, heat uh, treated to 6364, um, which is exactly like the the sweet spot and the hardest you, you can get uh, Magna Cut before it starts getting brittle. Uh, Magna Cut is uh, the steel that brings you closest to an ideal balance of um, blade ret or uh, edge retention, um, resistance to corrosion, and toughness. Those are the three things that you're always trying to get and it, one always suffers magna cut uh, brings this close to having them all equally uh, on point is my understanding from laren thomas uh so uh you can i've noticed uh you know i, I used to complain a lot about the hoag clips it, it seems they made this a gauge heavier not due to my complaining i'm not suggesting that but i i feel like it feels a, a a little bit heavier. Maybe the coating on there makes it heavier feeling, but great action. And I'm actually using the lock. Uh, uh, well, sometimes anyway, sometimes I'm using the lock, especially when open. Um, I just feel like if it's there, why not? I'm not so concerned about this popping open, but uh, I'd hate for it to close in use. Not that I've come close to closing it in use, but you know, I don't know. That's just how I am. All right. So that's the Ritter Hoag RSK Mark I. Uh, that's a, a Knifeworks exclusive. Knifeworks.com exclusive, as are all Ritter Hoag RSK models. Whether you want the full size regular with the thumb stud or the small version or any of the Timascus, uh, or I'm sorry, G Mascus versions, man, there are a lot of them and they're beautiful. And you have to get them at Knifeworks. All right. Okay, so let's talk about truck knives. Now, I I don't have a truck. I have an SUV. I have a uh, you know, uh, a truck is what I what I consider a truck is like a pickup or something biggish. Uh, but I'm using the term truck knife because that's kind of uh, in common parlance. I feel like a lot of people use that term, and it just kind of means that knife that you leave in the car. Now, I have a few stipulations here for me. For me, a truck knife or a, a car knife has to be easily replaceable. 
It can't be too expensive. It can't be too special to me. And and in not being too special to me, incidentally, they become special to me uh, because they get a lot of use. And then after a while, you're like, wow, this thing's really great. Uh, and uh, most of them have to lock because I'm, uh, I, I, I do have a couple of non-locking options that I'll start with. Um, but the reason I want them to lock is because this is the knife that you leave in your car just in case you forget a knife and you're going somewhere and you need it. Obviously, you need it. Uh, but it also has to do the duty of, uh, say, you get stranded by the side of the road, you, whatever it is, and you need to do some some sort of heavy chores with a knife. And that's the tool you got in your pocket and you don't want it closing on you. So most of these will be locking except for these first. Um, now, I have had uh, I, I always have on station a slip joint in the car, as well as a locking folder, as well as a uh, medium sized fixed blade, as well as a large Bowie. These days, I've had my Leroy in there. Uh, but um, for folders, uh, I've always had a slip joint. And that was originally for food prep, for cutting muffins for my girls uh, on the way to school, that kind of thing. Um, but I'm going to show you two that I think would be excellent. OK, so the first is if you're going to have a non-locking, um, not great steel blade, why not have two steel blades? So here we have the uh, Rough Rider. Uh, here's a trapper. It can be any Rough Rider trapper. This one is I don't remember what uh, what series this was from. This was a gift to me from BJ Hill, I believe. You have a, a nice hollow ground um, uh, spade blade there. By the way, I like the angle at which they put the spade blades. Oftentimes they're at uh, accelerated cutting angles, and we know what that's for, so why not make that job quicker? So you have this, and then you have a second, or a, a, the other main blade is uh, a clip point. These are 440 steel, uh, 440, whatever the worst 440 is, I think. 440A, I think it is. And um, so they're, it's a soft steel, but they, they, they're wicked sharp and they um, can sharpen up easily. And it's a $12 knife. So if you lose it, it's not going to break the bank. Uh, but also, it's, it looks nice. You get a Rough Rider, it's always going to look nice. It's going to have uh, excellent fit and finish for a $12 slip joint knife. Uh, it's not too um, threatening if you're worried about that, if you get stopped or something and you don't want something too threatening. Uh, but it'll get the job done for most of those things I'm talking about, except for the roadside cutting open your tire kind of chore, which I don't know what that is or if it exists. Uh, something like Scab would do in one of his test videos. Uh, you wouldn't want to use that. But um, for any other thing, this is probably going to hold you in good stead. And the reason I say a trapper is because you have two full size blades so that when one goes dull because it's not very expensive and it doesn't have very great steel, you'll have a secondary blade uh, to use. The second of this non-locking uh, type, you're going to want to get a couple of these. They are I, right now, uh, as I say this, I'm sure this will change uh, very, very shortly, but you can get these for five bucks on um, Smoky Mountain Knife Works as they're having a cold steel sale. Uh, but this is the Kudu Light. This was a uh, uh, a freebie knife uh, when I ordered something else from, I think, maybe Knife Center a while back, but I'm very impressed with this. Uh, I got the Kudu light that had the ring, um, the ratchet lock, and, the, and it broke immediately. Uh, this is a slip joint, as you can see here the, on the top. There's this big contoured bar faceted down there, or fastened down there, and it acts like a slip joint. But it is extremely stout. It's really, I mean, this is, this is, and then with your, with your grip enhancing the lock here by squeezing, this is a very stout uh, slip joint and super inexpensive. And that, that uh, 34, four, five, five CR 15 MOV steel sharpens up very easily is very, you know, gets really sharp. You've got a, uh, uh, GRN handle here. Um, this would make a great car knife because of how cheap it is. If someone busts into here, I, my car has been broken into numerous times. I used to live in Philly. It happened a lot. It even happened here once. It wasn't broken into. I left the car unlocked. I remember how it happened. But they walked off with a cold steel 
Recon One, hundred dollar knife, and I was the idiot who left it in there. So that's where this is coming from to a large extent. And this Kudu would make a great folder for the car because you could buy a couple of them and lose them on purpose and you'll still have a great knife uh, in backup. Or it's the sort of thing you could loan to a friend if they don't have a knife with them. Okay, so those are the only non-locking knives in this list. Uh, I chose Rough Rider because they're very inexpensive and in my experience, pretty damn good. Plus, if you like how a knife looks, you can find one that looks pretty damn cool from them. Uh, Kudu Light for its cheapness and size. All right. Here's here's probably the most classic of the truck knives uh, in this list. Yes, you know, the Buck 110. The Buck 110 is a great, great pocket knife uh, for not having in your pocket, <laughs> as far as I'm concerned. Uh, this is a knife you want to, if you're carrying it on your person, you'll keep it in the leather pouch on your belt. It is heavy. It's got uh, integral brass liners and bolsters so that's a big chunk of brass there and then you got this diamond wood which is like particle board wood basically uh, uh as inlays a big steel spring and steel guts there and then that nice big three uh point six inch hollow ground uh, 420 i think this is 420 uh blade here it's a heavy heavy knife but a great knife it feels so good in hand uh, all the contouring uh, makes this handle feel soft and warm in hand. And um, the blade itself is so rock solid in that in that classic backlock handle. Um, it works really, really well. Uh, I love how uh, so this is a cheap Walmart Buck 110. I know some of them come with the Boss Heat Treat. Uh, and then you can go on the Buck website and go down the rabbit hole, build your own 110. Uh, using all sorts of different materials, and and they have sportsman models, all sorts of different models. I uh, featured on the show recently a couple of different ones, uh, but this is your basic, basic 110, and it's just a great knife. Uh, I like to quote uh, Rob Bixby of Apostle P. He called this the original redneck of uh, tactical folder, and yeah, he's right. How many how many times was this used in a fight before? Uh, uh, you know, one-handed opening and and clip clips and 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 you know being spoiled by the modern age. Um, so yeah, a great capable knife. Uh, if I didn't mention it already, that's a hollow ground blade. Um, and though it's 420 uh, blade steel, it's it's a worker. This is a this is a, a great knife. I have its cousin here too. You might want or its little brother, uh, which you might consider as a car knife. That's the 112 Ranger. I have one of those quick thumb studs on there. Two great knives, two heavy knives, uh, both excellent for in the car. And uh, and uh, a real, well, this, a little bit of dark humor, but a, a real jackpot for whoever breaks into your car. No, oh, that's not happening, is it? Okay, next up is from Off Grid Knives. It's the Off Grid Rapid Strike Rescue uh, as its stand in because, um, well, I put that in my wife's car because we went out the other night and I left it there and now she's not here. Uh, but uh, this was, the, well, I should say the Off Grid Rapid Strike um, Rescue, which is an orange handled rapid strike with a Warncliffe blade. Uh, that's their one assisted opening knife. Uh, that's what's in there currently. It replaced this. This was my car knife for a long time. Uh, this is the Enforcer. And I guess any off-grid would be good because, um, well, not any off-grid, but many of them will not break the bank. Many of them are under $100, um, some of them below $75. they are all stout as hell made by Best Tech or made by another Taiwan manufacturer that's doing awesome work. And some of them, like this Enforcer, even have a glass breaker. That's what uh, originally had this stationed in my car door. Uh, I have a bunch of glass breakers at this point in my car, um, but you never know which one will be uh, readily available in, in a dynamic situation. Uh, this one has D2. I also have a special edition in 154CM and Red Dawn, Black and Red G10. Uh, another thing I like about this as a car knife is the grippiness. Um, that is a field of raised pyramids, G10 pyramids. Uh, 
otherwise known as knurling, I guess. And it really does uh, grip the hand uh, and the glove really nicely. And in any sort of emergency situation where you need a knife to um, get you out of a whatever the situation is, you're going to want it to stay in hand. Uh, the last or, or one of the other very main reasons why this was uh, a good car knife and why the Rapid Strike Rescue Knife is also currently serving that duty is the tip. The tip is low down on the design below the center line. And you have here a, uh, a flat, uh, whereas on the Rapid Strike, you have a curved surface. But the point is you can slip under things like seat belts or uh, clothing, but seat belts especially. Now, this one is a little pointier right there. The, the other one is more curved. So that's that's you're going to have to use a little less finesse to get that under there. But uh, the, the overall profile of the blade is is good for slipping under things to cut. And I think I think mostly of seat belts when I think of that scenario. Great action on this. So uh, while you're fidgeting in the car, you know, at that stoplight, uh, this is a good one for that, too, um, on bearings and great, great drop shut action. Uh, let's admit, you know, we're all just people, too. And we got to we got to pass the time at the stoplight. Uh, this is on the higher end of this list. This is probably the most expensive knife in this list, uh, yet it's still under one hundred dollars. All right. Next one is is very far under a hundred dollars, and it's a knife that I hate. Uh, but I'm going to put it in this list for a couple of reasons. First of all, it's stout; it could handle itself in a situation, especially if you make sure it's sharp. Um, and it's very common, and it's very inexpensive, and you might even throw a party if you lose it. Uh, and all of those things make this knife uh, endearing, or if not endearing, at least a good leave in the car knife. It's the Gerber paraframe. No, everybody knows. Uh, you might know that I have a special dislike for this knife. And you say, why do you have it? And I'll say, well, I don't have a special dislike for this particular knife. This was a gift to me from a really cool friend of my wife's that I think is a great dude. And he knows I like knives and he wanted to get me something for my birthday. And he got me this. And to me, that means more than anything. Uh, just so happens that it's in the shape of a Gerber paraframe. And uh, though I like to complain about this knife, um, it does, it, it would do the job well. Uh, it is all steel. So you got a steel frame here, uh, frame lock that, that is like got a hundred percent engagement there. Tip down only, of course. Um, but not so bad here. It, it does not. Uh, affect my grip. I don't really feel it at all. If anything, it actually bulks up the handle right up here where I kind of need it to bulk up because it's a thin framed knife, as you can see. Um, on this blade, out of some mystery steel blade, uh, it's it does have this belly is quite sharp. Now, I had the small version of this and it dulls quickly. Um, uh, and that small version, that was like the first small locking knife I think i ever had uh or at least that i edc'd with other knives and um that doled out really quickly but what does stay are the serrations so serrations are a good thing to have in a car knife for this for this very reason you might have a knife like the gerber paraframe that's not made of excellent steel that bangs around in your car for years that you never really sharpen that gets dull but still you have those serrations you're going to be able to uh, do what you need to do so i I think uh, what I mean by do what you need to do is cut yourself out of a sticky situation, especially in a car like uh, for the fibrous, tough material of a seat belt. This would be great. <coughs> Pardon me. So Gerber paraframe it's not going to win any beauty contest. It's not going to win any uh, knife of the year engineering awards. But for sitting in the car door untouched, for months at a time and to be pulled out for, uh, you know, that burger you want to cut in half or that seatbelt you need to cut out of or whatever else, this will do you good. And like I said, if you lose it, it's like 20 bucks or something. OK, next up, this is a modern classic. This is a contemporary classic uh, right here, and that is the QSP Penguin. 
the uh, QSP Penguin has has come out now in a million different flavors. Uh, some some of them exclusives at knife purveyors that we love, um, and <coughs> others just variations on a theme uh, that QSP has come out with. But this is the first, and maybe the best, maybe not. I don't know. I had the uh, Penguin Plus. We gave that away. That was awesome. Titanium and M390, I think, or 20 CV. Uh, but this, uh, with the blue jean, the denim micarta, and just the D2 sheep's foot blade is awesome. And it's like 30 bucks uh, in, in this configuration uh, on Amazon. And you can buy it and drop it in the car door. And you have an amazing knife that will, you know, it'll be there for whatever you need. Now, uh, something I do like about this, as opposed to, say, the paraframe, that came before it or some of the other knives in this list is that it's full micarta. So uh, the handles are full micarta, meaning if this is sitting in your car door and it is February and you, and you need to cut something, uh, it's gonna, it's gonna be less cold on the hand because of that micarta. Uh, the paraframe is going to be, well, it's going to be like picking up a piece of frozen steel. Uh, micarta has the softer, warmer, uh, feel to it and uh, this will be an easier thing to use just because of that material uh, i think the blade shape is really great because it's you've got all of the utility use of a um of a sheep's foot that is the the straight edge and then the straight spine and then this rounded off drop but you have enough point to get some of the puncturing capability of a worn cliff uh, so in a pinch um, you know, I always think of all of these knives as also you forgot to carry a knife and you don't have one in your backpack, which never happens. But this is going to be your knife for the day. So um, if if that were the case, this would be a great this would be a great option for that, too. Uh, the QSP, it's not going to break the bank, very capable and uh, has a, many, many different flavors uh, to satisfy your aesthetic needs. Next up, this is a new one uh, that you can find for $20 at Home Depot based on a classic Daryl Ralph uh, DDR knives design. This is the Camillus Dominator. Dominator uh, is the um, Daryl Ralph model. Uh, it was a big four inch Bowie uh, folder. Loved that knife. Always wanted a Dominator. Um, and uh, I'm strolling through Home Depot and I saw this. And then. Um, Camillus reached out to me. Hey, you want to check out our Dominator knife? I'm like, hell yeah. Uh, so they send it. It's a $20 knife. Just keep that in mind. And um, it's been sitting around on this desk for uh, a couple of months now. And it just gets it gets a lot of use. And I don't really clean it because, <laughs> you know, it's one of those knives that you don't baby. You just use it when you need it. And uh, this would be a great one to put in the car because... Readily available, $20 at Home Depot. Uh, some sort of mystery uh, stainless steel that they say is titanium bonded, whatever that means. But it does pretty well. It's not bad. Um, you know, it's kind of like an 8CR, kind of feels like an 8CR 13 MOV. So you can use it for a while, but it takes a great edge. And then and then you just got to strap it back up. doesn't take long to get sharp, um, but doesn't take long to dull either. Um, one thing of note in my review, I talked about that uh, kind of awful shaped flipper. I think it's awful because of how sharply it curves into the finger well. It just sort of, uh, I don't know, it's uncomfortable. That's what it is, unergonomic. And uh, I mentioned that in my review and the guys from Camillus, uh, two, two great guys from Camillus I was dealing with, got in touch with me and let me know that that was part of the design and they had no rights to change it so uh, that is part of the original dominator design a um a gun hammer style i remember it looking differently but uh, basically a gun hammer style of a uh, flipper uh, commander and uh, 1911 commander gun hammer style and uh, they couldn't change it so this is uh, if you don't like it you can just uh, take a grinder and take a little bit off there or whatever but uh, in any case, this is a great one to pop in the car. Like I said, inexpensive and cool. It looks cool. And it's a fun fidget knife. I mean, it's on bearings. Everything's on bearings now, you know. That's a very low barrier to entry, uh, being the, the bearings now. 
So in the car, you need that sort of fidget factor as well. All right, next up, this was my car knife for quite a while. And uh, whether you get this or any one of the many, many, many knives in the M16 series from CRKT, those would be great knives to put in there. Again, you have a good looking knife. Uh, these are Wes Crawford designed. Uh, was it Wes? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Kit Carson designed. Kit Carson's basically the guy who invented the flipper. Um, but uh, this is a long standing uh, line of knives from uh, CRKT, the folding M16. This is one that has a uh, this has a military number on it. Uh, and uh, it was used uh, this one was bought at the px for me by my brother-in-law and i think the marine corps was using this knife for a while Hang on. Uh, no it's it's just a u.s patent number it's not the it's not that uh, acquisition number but i do know that this was officially being used uh, uh by the marine corps it's it's a cool knife it's big it's a big uh, knife for this uh those quillions uh work as you can use them like a wave feature when you when you pull it out of your pocket you can wave the knife out it's got that secondary locks l a w k s system here and um it is involuntary you have no choice i could take it apart and remove it but i got used to just uh closing it one handed just by using a different finger to disengage that lock and my thumb to do that uh but very stout and sturdy um Definitely a good tactical option. And like I said, it comes in much smaller sizes with a uh, spear point uh, blade and tanto blade, serrated, non-serrated. So you have a lot of different options, but a good and inexpensive knife to uh, drop in the car pocket there, the door pocket. All right, next up, also good for readable availability um, is the big box Kershaw a speed safe knife and in this case this is the uh this is the wesson uh this one is designed by les george so not all big box speed safe um uh, kershaws are the same uh, i say big box just loosely i'm just talking about these knives that they insist on putting the speed safe in I, i'm sure they sell very well you can buy them at walmart and and uh and those big box stores uh, and they they oftentimes have the steel frame lock, so they're stout and sturdy. Uh, your own grip fortifies that uh, lock. And they have the speed safe, so, you know, you can get into uh, fidgeting with a speed safe if you're, you know, if you're not too much of a snob. <laughs> and you get an inexpensive 8CR13 MOV uh, blade steel on all these, which, again, dulls easily but sharpens quickly. Uh, so, um, and in this particular case, a very good looking knife. I, th I think a lot of the Kershaw big box speed safe knives are pretty attractive. They always catch my eye and then I'll look at the blade steel and the fact that it's speed safe and, the, and whatever, and I'll slowly, you know, decide or quickly decide why I'm not going to get it, but I'm always, uh, drawn to their, their designs. This one here is a really nice hollow ground blade and of course, beautiful bayonet spear point, but, uh, so you can you can get a knife like this um, that is inexpensive from Kershaw. Good knife, good design, sturdy. Um, uh, under you can get you can get these for under thirty bucks. Uh, I'm not sure about this Wesson, but um, great option. Drop it in there, and and again, if you lose it, if it gets stolen, it's not the end of the world. Now, if this one was lost or stolen, it would be well, it'd be close to the end of the world because my my daughter got this for me, and I love this knife. Uh, but the rat series right now, as we speak, buried deep in my uh, survival kit in my car is a is a rat one. This is the rat two. Uh, I was just looking at rat ones. That's the larger version of this three point seven uh, five inch D2 or OS eight blade with the FRN handle liner lock. Tough, tough EDC knife needs no introduction. Everyone knows them. You can still get them for 40 bucks or less on amazon i i don't know why i don't have like 12 of them at this point um but a really great knife everyone knows how great this is fully flat ground super utility all day long with this blade very nice ergonomics i never liked the looks of this knife but um you know like an ugly child <laughs> it, it is oh wait wait i mean uh, uh 
politicians, ugly buildings, and whores all become respectable if they last long enough. And it's the same thing with this knife. It's become good looking to me because it's that trusted, uh, trusted partner. I know we'll always have my back. And in this case, the black and the pink is very compelling to me. I like black with pink. Or, or if I'm going to have a pink anything, I like it with black. Reminds me of the of Pinky Tuscadero, um, you know, Fonzie's girlfriend with the, the, the pink ladies. Did I get all that right? Or am I mixing that with grease? Anyway, a great, great truck knife, great folding knife to keep in the car. Uh, that is the... Oh, I'm sorry, that is the Rat 1 or the Rat 2. Classic EDC folders. Okay, the last one here I just got, and this has yet to do duty in, in my car, um, which is good. <laughs> no one should be doing duty in my car. Uh, it is uh, a knife that I've wanted for, uh, since it came out, but when it came out with the light version, I jumped all over it. This is the $36 full-size sr1 light from cold steel i i stress full size because 36 bucks man it's pretty inexpensive for such a great knife uh, okay so what makes this light here let me get the okay so sr means survival rescue and the sr1 is an s35 and g10 knife that looks just like this or a clip point version that sells for like we'll say 150 bucks or so by cold steel uh, this is the light version, meaning light on materials. It is light also because it doesn't have any liners, but uh, this is an FRN handle, stippled and textured. And then this is an 8CR13 MOV blade. It is incredibly sharp, even though it has a bit of a stout grind. It's so incredibly sharp due to that high uh, relief edge there. Stout, thick blade, thick, thick lock. That's a a triad lock. So of, of everything I've shown, this is the strongest of the knives, uh, definitely considering that lock choice. And uh, it's full size. You get a full grip on this and any, any, any task you're going to need to do, this is going to be able to handle. Anything that any folding knife is going to be able to do, this is going to be able to do uh, better. <laughs> uh, really comfortable ergonomics here. You got plenty of room. You got that Joe's giant hands with those big sausage fingers. Uh, yeah, this, this will accommodate you. Look at that. If I come right up there, I got a full, I could have a six finger hand, uh, or a seven finger hand. Look, if I come up to the, uh, to the choil there. So great work. And I love the idea of a Tonto, just like I was talking with that off grid, uh, Warncliffe. I do love a Tonto also for similar reasons. You got an incredibly stout tip. You got that straight edge uh, here, and then you've got something you can scrape with if need be. So an excellent, excellent all around car knife, 36 bucks. You cannot go wrong uh, in the SR1 light. All right. That has been my uh, trip down truck knife lane. I hope you liked it. Uh, let me know what you like for truck knives in my car. I also have a number of other things. Like I said, the Bowie knife. I love the um, some of the real inexpensive cold steels like the Roach Belly or the Canadian Belt Knife or some of those, uh, you know, sub $20 knives uh, for in the car. You just never know when you need a knife. You never know when you want a fixed blade uh, with you. So do check that out. All right, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining uh, this uh, this episode of the Knife Junkie podcast. Be sure to join us uh, on um, next Thursday night for Thursday Night Knives. Of course, join me in Conroe, Texas, if you can, this weekend for the C Texas Custom Knife Show. All right, for Jim working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer. Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at the knifejunkie.com or call our 24 7 listener line at 724 466 4487 and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the knife junkie podcast